Now the example we're going to see uh, to look at is the executive function. We're going to build a simple shell and there is something about the executive function that is let's say when you call the executive function and the command succeed the creative process will replace your main process and those will cause your main program to stop let's do an example for you guys to understand what I mean let's say we have a program and the program we have a while loop and then what happened is that we have a prompt to tell the user enter command and what happened next we call the get line function the get line function receive parameter called the command and we also set something called the buffer size uh, let's wait I want to declare uh, this thing called an array of arguments like that args and it will contain two arguments one for the command and another for this is a null terminated array so we call the get line command um, let's also declare a variable of type size t uh, which is and read the number of bytes read by the get line command and the other one will be a size t type oh, yeah, the end byte is actually an s size t and the other one is a size t type which is uh, what I'm gonna call um, buffer size Um, the buffer size I'm going to set it to zero for now and I'm going to call the this is the end read byte I'm going to call the get line function we have to pass in a pointer so what we're going to pass in is the address of the first elements in the args array So that's it and after that we pass in the address of the buffer uh, size this will uh, hold the size of the buffer and then we call the std in so here what we're going to do next I think this is not a, the right way to go about it. I'm just going to declare another variable called man. So this will, and the other one, I'm going to call it uh, command length. This is much more understandable. So here we have command. The get line function will allocate memory and here we have the command length it will update the the, the, the variable command length based on how uh, uh, the length of the string we read from the std in uh, input next we take the command then we replace the last character which is a line grip with a null character we want to remove this before calling our exec function so the first argument is the command and the next argument is a null we don't have any argument to pass to the command yet 
And after that, we call the exec v function. The exec v function will receive the first argument and the second argument. And after that, we have the null. Uh, the first parameter is a, a reference to the pointer to a string, so the first element. And the second parameter is the arguments that the command is going to receive and the last one is the environment we don't have any environment variable to pass in here so we left it like that now what happened when the exec v function succeed if the exec v function is succeed the current process the process running this program will be replaced by a new process so uh, our uh, program will stop and if the exec v function fail, then we'll see that uh, the main process continue with the while loop and prompt the user again to enter a new command. We can do a test and see what how this thing works. I'm gonna call this program uh, shell. It looks like a shell. Now it asks for a command. It says enter a command. Now we enter a command, no command executed. But if we enter a valid path name like being ls, the command get executed with the exec v function, then the shell stop. This is what we want to prevent. We don't want the shell to stop after the first succeeded command. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this uh, we're going to start the new process from within a child process. How are we going to do that? We say okay, uh, we call the fork function, and if we are in the child process, the fork return zero. And if we are in the parent process, we're going to wait, else wait for the child process to finish because the fork returns different value regarding which process we are in. Now, if we are in the child process, then the child process, the next instruction would be this one. And just after that, we don't want the child process to continue with the loop we're going to say, okay, the child process will exit anyways. But if the command, uh, if the exec v function succeeds, then the child process uh, will be replaced, not the parent process, the main process. So this is the idea, creating a child process from within which we call the exec v function. Then if the exec v function succeeds, the child process gets replaced instead of the main process. I want to add something here uh, to print a message on the standard output uh, like that, command not found. I'm going to call the dprinter function and we're going to display something on the standard error output if an error occurs. This is a formatted string. So we display the name of the command, then we say command not found. Then after that, we pass in the name of the command, which is the first argument. Now, great, let's uh, compile this code again. Now we ent it says enter a command. If we enter a valid command this time, we see that the command execute, then enter command display. So uh, since the parent process is not waiting, well, uh, since the parent process is not getting replaced when the exec function succeeds, we don't have this problem where the shell just stop after a successful execution of the command. Now let's type in something, a random command like that. 
So it says command not found. This is a simple shell and that was the last example. This could be useful for uh, the simple shell project. And if you know, uh, we just, we start the execution of the command in a child process in order to avoid the main process being replaced. Thank you. Do not forget to uh, command in order for us to improve. Have a great day.